So what you see here on the screen is my excerpt from a life table. It's life table. It's a life table for Belgian males from the year 2013. And as part of the chapter three, we want to be able to understand what the entries in such a life table, what they refer to, right? And during the computer lab uh, this week, you're going to download such data from the human mortality database, and you're going to visualize, you're going to play around with these um, data. So there is not too much uh, heavy coding involved, uh, I would say, for this week's uh, computer tutorial. It's merely about handling data, plotting data in a meaningful way. Um, and if, if you master these, um, these tasks, then the computer lab for this week will be, will be fine. So what kind of entries do you see? We'll look at one year of data. We've got the ages uh, going from zero up to nine in this uh, particular example, because I'm only printing the first 10 lines. I've got my QX, which is my mortality rate, as we discussed it. I've got my EX, which is my final column here, which is the complete life expectancy, as we discussed it. And then I've got two new kits on the block. That's the LX and that's the DX. And this is where I want to start uh, today. So what is the meaning of this LX? What is the meaning of this uh, DX? And how do they relate to the QX, to the mortality rates that we have in this uh, table? And I'm going to start again uh, from here. So what we have here is a meaning or an interpretation uh, of the um, of the LX, huh? the LX column that you find in, in your life table. And the way how we're going to look at this LX is we're going to say, well, if you look at a random variable, LT, denoted with a capital because it denotes a random variable, and I'm going to assume that LT follows a binomial distribution and represents the number of survivors until HX plus T from a group of LX individuals, independent lives that I start with and who all have HX, right? So I've got this group LX and I'm going to say, yeah, with a probability of success TPX, each of them survives until HX plus T. And then this LT random variable is going to capture how many out of the initial group of size LX, how many of my individuals will reach HX plus T. So if that is the meaning of this LT random variable, and if I use my knowledge of the binomial distribution, then I can say that the expected value of LT is equal to the number of experiments that I'm doing, that's the LX, multiplied with the probability of success, and that's the TPX, right? And that is exactly what this LX plus T entry in my life table is going to express. So out of an initial group of, in this case, LX individuals at HX, what is the expected number of survivors until HX plus T? So that also shows me that there is a connection uh, between the survival probabilities, the TPX, and the, and the LX column uh, in my life table. Because that means that if I have access to the LX column in my life table, then I can calculate the TPX by taking the ratio of LX plus T and LX, right? So that is how these uh, different columns or these different concepts um, would relate to each other. So if I start from this expression, so TPX, if I want to know TPX, then I can look into my life table and I can grab LX plus T and divide it by LX, right? And if I then want to re-express the mortality rate Q30, for instance, well, then I can make the reflection that Q30 is the complement of P30, right? And this P30 can be calculated, can be obtained as the ratio of the L31 divided by L30, right? So L30 tells me how many individuals are alive at age 30, and L31 will tell me how many of these will survive until age 31. So if I take the ratio of these two, I've got the survival probability, the one-year survival probability of a 30-year-old. So you can, of course, manipulate these expressions. Uh, you see that over here, so that's not uh, anything very big. Let's also relate to a deferred mortality probability. So let's say we're interested 
in calculating and obtaining the following deferred mortality probability, we look at a 40 year old. We want this 40 year old to survive first 15 years. And then when he or she reaches age 55, we wanna know what's the probability that this individual will die in 30 years from there, right? So we know from last week that we can calculate this deferred mortality probability by multiplying the survival probability with the 30Q55 in this case. Now, if you relate to your L column in your life table, you can re-express the survival probability as the ratio of L55 and L40. And this mortality, this 30 year mortality probability can be re-expressed as follows. You massage these expressions and eventually you will find what you see here at the bottom. Now, how would you describe what is in here and the difference between L55 and L85? Well, that is of course then the expected number of people who will die between age 55 and 85, given that you started with L55 people at age 55, right? So that's the next concept that we wish to introduce. That's the notation DX next to the LX, where the DX is gonna express the expected number of people who die out of a certain initial group at age X. So that's the following concept. And the life table also shows me the DX. How are these DX obtained as the difference between LX and LX plus one? And so keep in mind, you have to put them in this particular order because of course LX will be a bigger number than LX plus one. LX is the number of, number of people out of the initial group who are alive at age X. And LX plus one, number of people who reach age X plus one, right? You can massage this expression. That's um, what I'm showing over here. So that eventually you see that this DX is LX multiplied with QX or put otherwise the QX is the DX divided by the LX. So these are different ways to come up with the mortality rates and their connection with the expected number of people alive and the expected number of deaths. So if we introduce DX, the binomial random variable, representing the number of deaths at age X from a group of LX independent lives who are alive and who are age X old, right? Then we can say that the expected value of the DX is the number of experiments, that's the LX, multiplied with the probability of success, that's, that's in this case, sadly, the QX, right? And this expected value, that is what the, the small DX in my table is expressing. So if I start with LX individuals, the DX gives me the expected number of uh, deaths at a particular age X, okay? So you've got all this information together in the life table. So that means if you have the uh, LX's, you can go to the survival probabilities. If you have the DX's, you can go to the mortality rates and vice versa, 